Hi guys, welcome to FDM Transtastic. I'm Emil and this week we are talking about camps, pools, activities, stuff like that. Now I don't have a lot of like first-hand experience with this because I've sort of avoided places like this since I've realized that I was trans. It's not until now that I've had top surgery that I feel more comfortable going swimming and going to public pools and going to like certain other activities, even just to go to the gym. It's not until now that I feel more comfortable to do that regularly and by myself. But there are still some tips that I've just thought of in my head that I know that I would do if I were in this situation or that I've just heard other people do and give out as tips. So I'm going to mention some of those and I will encourage all of you to, if you have any tips and tricks of your own when it comes to camps or sports activities, scouts, whatever, you know, public pools, whatever, uh, put them in the comments, all your tips and tricks for dealing with those situations as a trans person, and you can all just sort of go look in the comments and maybe you'll find some really nice tips down there. So I've written some things down on my phone, which by the way is a new phone and it's so much better than my old one, which was crap. Like I was dying every single day, and this one is so much better. I'm living a whole new life. I'm blessed. I'm just gonna read these things straight off my phone. I hope you can forgive me for that. Number one. If you want to go to a camp, public pool or activity, contact the staff beforehand and ask about accessibility for trans people. Obviously you don't have to do this, but like it's something that can help you. I actually did this with a public bathhouse, a public pool that I want to go to. I've just never made it there, but I still want to go. I emailed them and I asked about accessibility for trans people when it comes to the changing rooms. And I got a response back and so now I sort of know what to ask for when I get there. Like, it makes me feel a little less anxious. I'm not that anxious about the whole situation, but it makes me feel a little less anxious about it, and it's just, I think, good to remind places that trans people exist. It's so sad that we have to do that, but, like, it's good to remind them that we exist and that it's important to have accessibility for us. Number two, if you're nervous, bring a friend if you can. They can help prevent misgendering or help correct people if it happens. I think this is really good if people uh, never or very rarely gender you correctly and you're nervous about going to a certain event. Bringing a friend can make you so much more confident and they can help people catch on easier when it comes to your pronouns and stuff like that. It's not always possible to bring a friend, but if possible, I think it's a really great thing to do. Number three is if you want to go swimming but haven't had top surgery, look into rash guards and swim shirts. And obviously there are some binders that you can actually swim in, so those are things that you can look into if you don't want to or can't go swimming topless. I don't know a lot about these things, so I'm not the person to ask about further information for that, but there should be trans blogs like on Tumblr, probably some people in the comments, you can Google, you know, you can probably, you can probably figure it out um, if that's something that you are interested in. Number four is bring a baggy shirt to sleep in. This is obviously if you're going somewhere where you're gonna stay the night like a camp or something like that. Do not sleep in your binder. Do never ever sleep in your binder. Bring a baggy shirt get in your sleeping bag and just sleep and then like wake up, go to the bathroom, put on your binder or wrangle into it in your sleeping bag if possible without people thinking you're like a crazy larva trying to wrangle out of their cocoon. Never ever sleep in your binder. It's not worth it. You have to find an alternate solution. It's so important. It may seem hard, I know, but you have to find an alternate solution. Whatever you need to do, go to bed earlier than everyone else or later than everyone else, whatever you have to do to avoid sleeping in your binder. Number five, and the last thing that I've written down is a jock strap or packing underwear can help keep a packer in place while moving around a lot. So if you feel that you need a packer, if you're gonna be moving around a lot, then just putting it in your underwear, I don't know if that's such a good idea. I think it could be a little risky. So bringing a jock strap or buying a specific packer underwear, then that is a really good idea for that sense of security and feeling like you can really participate 100% in the physical activities. So those are the things that I could come up with off the top of my head right this morning. If you have any other tips, as I said before, please write them in the comments so you can share them with other people. And if you want more tips, go to the comments or obviously 
watch the other videos that will come this week, I can tell you one thing that's relating to swimming. I actually went swimming for the first time since I had top surgery not too long ago. It was midsummer, I had gone away, and me and my sister, we, um, we went swimming in a lake. It was really cold, it was raining, the only other person there was this dude swimming around with like a swim hat that said Iron Man on it. And his coach was standing <laughs> on the beach and like watching him swim back and forth across the lake, but it was lovely. It was so cool. It was such a like, nice experience and I really want to go swimming more times because I miss it. I think that it was definitely worth the wait um, for me to be able to go properly swimming the way that I want to, and yeah, whatever. I can't do words anymore today, so I'm gonna stop talking now, but I hope you'll have a wonderful week, and I will see you next time. Love you. Bye.